Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody, and welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader .com, uh weekend update show. The only difference is it's not the weekend yet, and it's not good evening yet. It's actually, you look at the clock, it is actually 1.45 uh, in the afternoon on Friday. In case you didn't know, the market closed uh, at 1 o'clock today on a short, uh, shortened uh, day of trading, right? Uh, again, before we get started, again, I want to thank everybody uh, for tuning in. If you are brand new to the channel, please like, share, uh, and subscribe, and we'll continue uh, to give you an unbiased opinion on uh, what we see in the market. If you are looking for a more uh, unbiased way of trading, uh, we are running our Black Friday uh, sale for the live webinar. Uh, so for all you guys who've been kind of on the fence and say, well, maybe I should try, maybe I shouldn't, uh, guys, put it this way. Um, I've been doing this for nearly 25 years. Uh, I've created the PS60 theory. It's based on uh, supply and demand. That's all it is. It's not opinions. It's not commentary. It's not bias. It's all about supply and demand. Uh, so if you are interested in the wonderful world of pivots, come check it out. The 30 days, see if it's for you. I promise it's not for everybody. It's a very patient way of trading. There's only six candles of the day. Uh, but it will definitely give you a different dimension, a little bit of a different view of at least how I uh, look at the market on a day-to-day -day basis. If you are uh, interested, I'm sure there'll be a link below uh, that you can check out for the next, it's running for the next three, four days. So for all you guys who are interested, I'd love to give you uh, kind, of a, a, kind of a good source of uh, kind of what to expect and what to see on a day-to-day -day basis. So my mom says all the time, no news is good news, right? And what that basically means is the, the ship is just going straight and there's decent waters. We don't have to worry about, uh, you know, rough waters ahead for a potential storm. There's always one out there. We're always uh, you know, aware there, there is a storm out there. But for so far, so now, <laughs> there is no news. And that's good news uh, for the bulls. Uh, if you look at this whole tremendous V-shaped recovery, and we are, what, uh, we're about a month a month left to the end of the year. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal move for the Bulls, especially in the last three weeks. Again, if you've been kind of under a rock, the keys have gone from uh, 342 uh, all the way up to uh, 393 in the last three weeks. And there's just been no pullback, right? We've been watching for it. We're ready for it. There's absolutely no pullback. The market continues to kind of sit and grind higher on this five-day moving average. You can see it. You know, here's a low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. It's all higher lows on the five day. When the market starts losing the five day, that's when we'll start to you know look for an aggressive back test. But for right now, it's a feel good market. We talked about this a couple of days ago, um, and the market just continues to grind higher. So instead of uh, instead of kind of trying to figure out twelve different angles or having a twelve different uh, type of views, of what's going on? I figured, hey, let's just look at some individual charts. The charts that I trade. Uh, the charts that are my focus, and um, I try to give you guys kind of, a, again, an unbiased look of what I'm looking for uh, for the up-and-coming week. Again, if you look at the scoreboard, uh, S&P up uh, another 1%, the Dow was up another 1.3%, and the NASDAQ only was up uh, one-tenth of a percent, but don't worry, NASDAQ's up 46% uh, for the year. Uh, other than that, we saw uh, you know, we saw a temporary uh, cease or ceasefire or kind of truce uh, that's going on in the Middle East, uh, exchange of hostages and all that stuff. So hopefully that will kind of play itself out with the least amount of casualties um, to come. Okay, everybody could say a prayer for that. Other than that, hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope everybody is not in a food coma and hopefully everybody is ready for the last lap, right? The last stretch of 2023 before we tackle all the goodies and all the nuances and all the moving parts of 2024. So like I said, instead of going through 12 different uh, type of scenarios going into this week, we know we're just watching the previous day's range for a potential back test that never comes. Uh, but let's take a look at individual names, right? The names that I trade, the 10 names uh, that I like to focus on to see if there is an edge uh, for them for the upcoming week. Let's start off with Tesla. So here's what's going on with Tesla. 
So we had two really aggressive pivots to the upside this week, or the last two weeks, on Tesla. The first time when it reclaimed the 50-day moving average, the second time when it reclaimed this 50-day moving average. The common denominator in the last two big trades above the 50-day moving average on Tesla was it failed, right? It absolutely failed. Um, if you, you know, It's been now twice in the last uh, two areas of the macro trade that I had a really good move on the stock of five, six, six, seven points on it. I had a runner, and guess what? My, my runner got stopped out the same way my runner got stopped out right here. My runner got stopped out uh, on, uh, was it, on uh, Wednesday as well. And today, you kind of saw Tesla trying to reclaim back the 50-day moving average. It looked good for a while. We caught, you know, caught a nice little move on Tesla, like a dollar, dollar and change. Uh, and then it kind of faded back, right? Got rejected and closed below the 50-day moving average. Here's what Tesla needs to do, right, from both sides of the market. You see the top of the channel here, and this is kind of what we were talking about, the top of the channel here for, uh, for, for Wednesday's video, okay? The top of the channel here will clear out all supply. Basically, it will end all debates, okay, whether the stock is good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, that's what the bulls need to do. They need to reclaim the top of the channel here, the 11.15 highs, to start moving aggressively higher. What the bears need to do is fall back into this whole supply zone, right? This whole demand zone and turn it into supply, which now becomes roughly the 200-day EMA. Everybody see that, right? So you see the top of the channel here, what it needs to reclaim, which is the 100-day SMA, and the bears need to get back below uh, this 200-day EMA. That's it. And between that, the stock is kind of going sideways. The stock is attempting to rally, then it gets rejected. The stock is attempting to sell off and moves back up. So we're kind of stuck in this little cluster, but at least we have a, a title data point, which to look at 100 day to the upside, 200 day to the downside, right? And the weird part about it is every single time it gets back above, right? Back above supply and you say, well, this is going to be the run. This is going to be run. And next thing you know, it fails you and it disappoints you. And this is why we always say, guys, Take money on the way up, right? When you're up two, three, four, five, six points in a trade, don't just sit there and look for another 20. Take your money off, okay? If you have a runner with 15%, 20%, 10%, whatever the case may be, maybe that runner will get you that extra five, 10 points. But in this business, there are no guarantees. And as much as we think we're smart enough, we know where a stock potentially could go, until it clears out supply and demand, it won't. And that's the name of the game. So going to this week, guys, we're watching the 100-day for a confirmation to the upside, and we're watching the 200-day EMA for basically a confirmation back to the downside. Let's talk about NVIDIA, right? So NVIDIA came out with super earnings, right? Absolutely super earnings. They blew out their top and bottom line. Um, they, they, they exceeded guidance. They rose guidance, all that part. The problem was, and we talked about it ahead of earnings, the problem was the stock already ran up like 115 points. So the question was going into earnings was, well, was the stock baked in, right? Was this last move baked into this last run? Well, we got our answer. It was baked in. So now the question is, what does NVIDIA have to do to reclaim both sides of the market? So let's talk about it. So you can see here, we had a nice reversal here, right? Really nice reversal here on Wednesday. We talked about this 490 channel. It finally broke, went all the way down to this 476 level. And today, put in an inside day, down another nine points. Now, before you turn around and say, well, the stock can't go, go any lower, it can. And before you turn around and say, well, the stock is still over uh, over exhausted, it can't go higher. Oh, no, it can. And that's why we talk about both sides of the market. So today, put in an inside day of, Friday, of Wednesday's sell-off. That's obviously not a good thing. So come Monday morning, I will be watching this whole range here, this rising 20-day support. If it starts losing this rising 20-day support, guess what? It has room to the downside. Again, it had a 115-point run-up. It only gave back like 20 points. You don't think it can give it back another 15, 20 points? Right, of course it can. What the bulls need to do is go back and reclaim this 5-cross 10-day moving average, which is roughly in the 490s. If it can start reclaiming back in the 490s, then yes, this little mini downtrend will get broken and the bulls will seize control. So 20-day breakdown for, on the, on, for the bears, uh, and 20 slash, excuse me, 10 slash five day cross back to the upside for the bulls. Uh, look at, uh, you know, look at Amazon, right? Look at Amazon. Amazon's doing fine, right? There was a one nasty reversal a couple of days ago. Uh, if you guys remember, Jeff Bezos was selling stock and now we know why he was selling stock for. They were buying some iRobot right? Apparently, allegedly. We don't know if that's exactly the reason, but he sold like 1.7 uh, million shares of the stock. And if you look at Amazon, 
Amazon actually is holding up very, very well. So if the market continues next week, uh, let's start looking at uh, the high from two weeks ago. If it starts taking out this channel here, maybe it starts pushing into the 150s. Uh, again, they're going on like every other retailer and everybody else for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So we should get some uh, indication of what's happening in Amazon's world probably in the middle of next week. So that should be uh, very interesting. But for right now, it's holding above the 5 and 10-day moving average. And it's nice channel here, nice flag uh, that continues to build. Uh, Microsoft with the whole, you know, with the whole saga, is this guy leaving? If he's not leaving, is he coming back? Maybe he should leave. Maybe he should come back. We don't know what to do. Stock is holding up very, very well. As you can see here, a uh, big, massive grind up, even when they, had, they try to sell off the news uh, into the 10-day moving average and held. And right now, it's just kind of grinding into the five-day moving average. Uh, Microsoft, you know, for it to go higher, it really needs to go sideways. This is one of those names that really put in a pretty big run. So it really needs to go sideways. What we need to see here on the downside is if it starts losing this rising 10-day support or if it starts going sideways and takes out the, the highest from several days ago, then it'll move up higher. Uh, Meta, same thing. Meta is holding up incredibly well. It's kind of a carbon copy of uh, of Amazon's chart. It's just sitting here grinding, moves up, goes sideways, moves up, goes sideways. Nothing really has changed there. Uh, when you look at Meta, right? When you look at, Meta, uh, excuse me, that was Meta. When you look at Apple, uh, Apple got a little tired, right? Apple got a little tired putting this inverted hammer here. And this is the first close below the five-day moving average. It didn't quite make the 10. The one thing we do have to watch when you see kind of this inverted hammer and it closed below the five-day moving average, the first thing we should watch going into, into Monday's session is a potential of a violation of the 10-day moving average. Because if it does violate the 10-day moving average and starts getting below, then you have some airspace down below uh, to the 20-day moving average. Something very, very uh, interesting. One of, the, one of the very few names that actually lost their five-day moving average on the close from Friday. Uh, Shopify continues just to, just to go absolutely insane. Uh, insane uh, after its earnings move. Again, every single time uh, it's, it's, it hits the five-day moving average, which, which is orange line. It keeps on bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Uh, again, if you are looking to play Am uh, Shopify, play it on the five-day for a potential bounce. Uh, those bounces work uh, very, very well. Just ask all those people who bought uh, Amazon today on the five-day bounce. It works uh, incredibly well. Uh, AMD, again, another earnings runner, earnings winner. Again, if you, you can see here, you know, it's, it it's keeps on bouncing uh, off the 10-day moving average. So this is a play that you want to watch into weakness. Again, it, these stocks need to breathe. Uh, first move into the 10-day. Keep an eye on this thing for potential bounce. As you can see here, uh, last time it hit the 10-day was 11.16 bounce. Then on the 21st, hit the green line again, the 10-day bounce. So watch this rising 10-day uh, moving average. Uh, there as well. Um, and some other names, you know, some other names that are, you know, looking pretty damn good, right? We talked about this on Wednesday. Uh, Snapchat, you know, is breaking out. This is the first close uh, above the range. Uh, we talked about Target, right? This is now Target's very, this is Target's uh, highest close in this whole formation. Maybe this thing finally starts uh, waking up. Look at a name like Roblox, right? Roblox had a big run, then came in into rising support, held it, and now you see how it just got rejected today off the 10-day 10 10 day moving averages green line. That's the same place it got rejected on the 1120 highs. Keep an eye on this thing. If this thing starts building uh, above the 10-day moving average, Roblox could wake up as well. So keep an eye on that. Um, some of these bank stocks, right? Some of these bank stocks are flagging as well. Look at Goldman. Tight, tight flag on Goldman. This thing looks really, really good. AIG, we talked about a couple of days ago. It's starting to flag and grind higher. This looks really good. You know, some names in the in the... Uh, insurance space, like look at MetLife, right? Look at MetLife, just train higher. So we're in a healthy market, guys. We really are in a healthy market. Uh, again, going into this week, for us to to really start looking for a back test, we have to at least put in one day of lower highs. And so far, uh, we haven't seen that boy in quite a while. That's It really does show you how strong and aggressive uh, this market is. So again, guys, if you are uh, on the fence or are interested or intrigued or been following me for years and years and years. And I, and I get this whole conversation all the time. I have, I have people follow me on, on Twitter or uh, on YouTube for, for years, five, 10 years. And they ask me questions for five, 10 years. And all I say is, hey, just come into the webinar for 30 days, check it out. And he did the same response is, I can't believe it took me this long to get here. Yeah, that's the whole point. Guys, we have 30 days. 
kick the tires, see if it's for you. Is it for everybody? It's probably not, right? Uh, but if you are patient and you believe in technical analysis or at least want to be exposed to technical analysis through the common view of supply and demand, this is something could be very, very cool. Guys, have a great night. God bless. Have a great weekend. And with God's help, we'll see you all on Monday. Take care.